Hello and welcome. My name is Luis, and today we're going to make a tileable texture using ZBrush Core. So to start off in an external program, I made a quad that is a meter wide. And I now also made a cube that is the same size as our quad, but I just added uh, 10 centimeters below it. Uh, we are going to need those, this extra geometry uh, to make if, for this trick to work. So we're importing this quad that is our reference. This is what we're going to bake our texture on and that is what we're going to use uh, to um, yeah, just to make the, the textures. And then we uh, we append the cube below it and that is what we're going to be actually uh, working on. Uh, we import the quad just to keep us true and if you wanted to make certain effects like dirt this will give you a point of reference to how deep you want to sculpt your, uh, your, um, your model. So now we go back to our uh, box. We subdivide it three times for this one, uh, but you could do it more. Uh, just turn off uh, the smoothing, the SMT uh, logo. I sped up the video from now on. And we're going to start by making polygroups. So these are going to be our tiles. So just hide everything using the selection tool and polygroup group visible under polygroups and then work your way and just make uh, make random selections of the tiles you want or not random you can make something perfectly correct if you want to match something but uh, for the style we're going for uh, in this video I'm going to make some random selections and there we go these are this is going these are going to be our tile now we're going to use our uh, modeling tools we've learned in the previous video and we're going to using the polygroups we're going to mask the polygroups and then using control and we're going to invert the mask and then so only our polygroup is now uh, un unmasked and using control we can move that polygroup upwards and we can make an extrusion. And then we're going to do the same thing for every polygroup. But from now on, once you make your extrusion, you invert the mask, you, s you hit grow mask a couple of times, and then you say group a mask, group mask, clear mask under polygroups. That way, because when you make the extrusion, uh, all the uh, faces around your extrusion uh, get the polygroups from the groups around that polygroup that makes sense so like so you can see that there are various colors around our extrusion so when you grow the mask you can just grow the mask a couple of times just to make sure you grab all these um, extra polygons you've created and remake so that way you can remake your polygroups you don't have to but it's it's easier to work with if you, the, the cleaner you work uh, the better. And we are extruding at uh, various heights because that's the uh, style we want. We're going to make some random dungeon tile and we want it to, to have the like the floor slightly warped over time so the tiles aren't exactly the same height. So basically for the entire part of this section this we're going to be repeating the same thing uh, mask invert the mask extrude using control in the move tool then invert your mask grow your selection your grow your mask then group mask clear mask so to redo your polygroup And once you've done this, so we're going to then sculpt this to make the, uh, the tile, to make the uh, R tile texture, but you can then 
reuse this uh, model and then make a more damaged tile or a cleaner tile. And then using the same base that we're doing now, you can make a couple of iterations. And this entire process, it's very stylized. So you, you, of course, you could take a, a lot more time and make something very, very, um, very nice, something nicer. But uh, the goal is to, to show you that under an hour, you could make uh, a pretty good base. And if you have to make, uh, if you're making a, a, a game with a, I don't know how many iterations you need to do and you need to make uh, a lot of new textures and new tiles and you need to have normal maps and everything. This is a way to speed up your process and uh, using ZBrush Core. We're about done making all our extrusions. For this, it's um, you should always turn uh, perspective off so it's easier to make your selections. There's no warping around the uh, camera edge. Okay, now we finished our selections. So now we, we're going to divide. Uh, we're going to divide the model a bunch of times. Now we've divided up to 2 million polygons. I'm going to divide even further. Just divide up to maybe a million polygons uh, without uh, turning on smoothing and maybe on the last subdivision you can turn on smoothing just to add a, a bit of uh, a bezel. Then we're going to use our hammer brush we've made in a previous video just to uh, give us some texture, uh, something random, something we are not controlling. And that gives us a bit of uh, something to work with. And then now we're just going to damage. Uh, we're going to hammer on, chip, break, uh, add some texture to our tile. So having these polygroups, we can now uh, work on every tile um, independently. That's why if you take the time and work cleanly at the beginning, it will save you a bunch of time later on. Trying to add some cracks using the alphas available inside of ZBrush Core. Just just work your way around. Try your try a bit of everything. Now using the Damon standard, I'm making some um, some cracks. As you see, if you unhide the base the base quad now you could use any brush to dig in and you could break parts of your tiles to go up to the ground and you could duplicate the you could duplicate the base model and uh, sculpt in some dirt and that way you would have some grout and dirt between the tiles if that's something you wanted Now looking at the shapes uh, our hammer, uh, hammer texture gave us, uh, trying to make some cracks that are following what we have under. So this part you can work on as long as you want. Using hard polish I'm starting to uh, chip off and damage the edges. This is the part you can spend as long as you want. And using the same uh, starting, uh, if you make a copy, you could make a lot of variations of the same tile. 
if you want something completely clean and then if you want a variation with a little bit more damage and something completely damaged starting with the uh, same uh, same amount of uh, starting with the same polygroups and selection you've made with the clean mesh you can make a lot of variations in a very little time now we're going to run over everything with trend dyna dynamic trying to chip off uh, where it's uh, logical where the cracks are The video is sped up, but in real time, we're about maybe 15 minutes in. Maybe 20. I didn't have any reference in front of me. So I was really guessing where to put those cracks but maybe if i had uh, done some research i would have um, looked at where tiles usually crack and how so now i've subdivided to 10 million polygons to add more i needed more geometry to make some sharper uh, sharper crisper um dense in the tiles but anyways you can do anything you want you can make any pattern you want since i wanted to have something that um that had smaller and taller tiles so the one square and the two square high tiles i subdivided the uh, square three times but you could subdivide more and make even more variations, maybe six times so to have, to have very small tiles and much bigger tiles. And it crashed. So I redid everything off camera. So from now on, the uh, the actual thing is different. The high poly is different than what I recorded the first time. But anyways, so now you export everything and then uh, using X normal we're going to bake our maps that we might use so no, a normal map uh, ambient occlusion and then I'm going to add a few maps uh, if you ever wanted to bring this into uh, substance painter to save even more time you could so you would need maybe a cavity map a thickness map a height map Uh, maybe bake two normal maps, a tangent and a world space map, uh, a curvature map, and then just hit generate. And I, I'm going to speed that up because it's very boring to watch. Okay, now in Photoshop, uh, I made, uh, I went online and found a few colors of tiles that I liked. Then imported all the textures we baked, make a new texture, and then going back to to my palette, I'm gonna pick the main color. Opened up too many files at the same time there flatten it because i didn't want to have the art thingy import the ambient occlusion and now something to know about the ambient occlusion since there weren't any uh tiles around there uh, there was nothing for the light to bounce and to bake on the outer edges of our um, model so now using uh the layer style in a white, I made a fill layer with white and then using, there I'm using outer glow, but I should be using inner glow and I will think about that later. 
So there you go. I'm making a dark a dark edge to yeah, yeah I'm just making a dark edge to add that extra uh, darkness that would have been uh, visible uh, if I uh, if there were actual geometry around the tile so uh, the geometry will appear correctly on the normal map but ambient occlusion uh, since you're baking uh, where the light is occluded if there is nothing around our the exterior of tiles there's nothing to bake to trap the light in so we had to add that manually and then just add the height map and just to add a bit of color variation and then we're going to uh, uh, import some stone textures and then just make it very very subtle just to add a bit of uh, real life uh, texture onto our uh, actual file but if you're using substance painter it's you don't have to think about that but here yeah we're just making bringing something in and then really taking it down that's maybe even too much Try different layer styles, blending styles. That's way too much. Okay, now going back to my palette, I'm going to um, I'm going to add a bit of a variation to the colors. So just going to randomly paint where I think these uh, colors would go. Trying out different brushes. Doesn't really matter. It's just to have a bit of texture and because in the end we're going to um, we're going to uh, smudge them so that they are not so obvious but we just want we to we want to break break our texture a bit Now we're going to use um, the uh, smudge um, tool uh, using a brush that uh, scatters. That way that blends nicely. And then we're going to import that below every other texture. like so and then you can save your texture and then import it in the software of your liking there I implore, imported it with inside you in Unreal Engine 4 added a bit of parallax and it's you can just apply that to any texture just tile it to your needs and that's about it and like so in an hour you can make a texture spend an extra 15 minutes or so and you can make variations and uh, i hope this you find this useful if you did uh, leave a, a, a like if you didn't leave a comment and i'll see you guys in the next one